Out of here is Hearth. This is Kyle Ferguson. Today I'm sitting down with Unaverted Sergeant Hammer. This is from Diamond Hands versus Storm Esports. And this is a later pick, Hammer, as you might assume. Unaverted, thank you for joining me. Hi, Kyle. Thanks for having me. So let's let's dive straight into the draft here because it's Hammer and there's a lot of concerns. Uh, in fact, if we're talking Storm League, there should be a Morales here, but that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, so how how did Hammer end up on this map as the map was shown? Did you guys already have Hammer in mind or did something happen early on that made you go, ooh, Hammer? Yeah, so um, I don't think it, the map matters too much. Um, most of what matters is that we are picking a map that Hammer has a role early game. Usually if you're trying to 4v4 with her, it's not good for her. She's just going to get CC chained. Um, she's going to get out traded. Her, her defensive tools early aren't that strong. So she's a big liability early. So that's one of the big check boxes that we look for. And late picking, we we already know what's uh, on the enemy team, what's on our team. So uh, we thought, you know, having Hammer just hang up bottom here, we were going to be able to get value and I wasn't going to be a hindrance to the team by picking Hammer early. So you immediately went to the bottom lane with Deckard. Deckard set you up a nice pile of potions to kind of give you some support in the background, but uh, is there another reason you went bottom? Um, yeah, so the way Ultrac works, the bottom lane is closer to our camp, it's farther from their camp. Uh, the camps are on a minute 30 cooldown, I believe, and it's pretty much the entire map for the most part. So we're just, clearing the camps and so the lane that's closer to the camp is the one that receives more help so and it's the one that's harder for them to gank so it, if i do need help we can funnel resources into me um and if they try to gank me they're going very far out of their way um rotating a few people all the way across the map can be a big waste of time if they don't get anything out of it oh uh wait a minute i uh I'm not familiar with this, so so the camp because it's such a huge priority on all track pass, which is a huge priority, as you said, like every what was a minute thirty seconds. Yes, if yeah. Those no I'm pretty sure it's right, but, exactly. So so, Blaze versus Urel. Urel is actually in a point of safety up there because the team is going to be visiting their camp on the upper right side so often. Yes, and also the terrain leading up to this. So if you look at the terrain. Um, from the bot right side, they typically have to rotate around either the big rock that's right below the mid four, or they need to go all the way on the right side. So it can either be unsafe for them going through our territory, or the rotate takes way longer. So it creates unsafe rotates for them, and it's mirrored on the other side, but top lane for us. Um, and we get safer rotates to help me. So uh, yeah, naturally the lane that's closer to your camp tends to be the safer lane and the lane that you try to get more value out of, but it's not a hard set rule. It's just kind of how the map tends to function based on how the terrain's laid out and how important the camp is, but it doesn't happen every time. Interesting. So did they make a early game mistake there by putting Urel in that lane or is it more that Urel would just be countered by Hammer and therefore we're not doing that in the first place? Uh, I think they may have misunderstood if Leeming won this matchup or not. Okay. Uh, as seen here, it's it's not good for Leeming at all. So, um, yeah, in a, in a strict 1v1, Sergeant Hammer is going to win the lane really hard, which is what happened. Uh, same thing would happen with Ural. They really don't have anyone to answer me. Uh, possibly Tychus is the best answer that they have because they need someone that can clear the wave and somewhat trade with me, but um, pretty much with uh, this build, no hero can uh, fully out-trade you uh, given a long period of time because you're going to out-life steal. You have the range for the uh, small bits of poke. That There's a lot of things going for this hammer build. Interesting, yeah, and you're absolutely getting access to every single one of the orbs. You're using your mines repeatedly in the bush right above you. Is that yep. the kind of the, the primary, particularly pushed up like this, the murd and coming around would come through, touch that bush, get slowed by 25%, and that kind of gives you the best edge to get away? 
Yeah, and um, I'm stacking the mines together, so uh, we have kill pressure. So okay, uh, the the mines do a decent amount of damage. So if I stack like six or eight of them together, um, you know, however many I can get, uh, then it's gonna do a, a thousand damage as soon as he uh, comes in. I guess he has the twenty five armor, but yeah, it it does a lot of damage. So it. Coming in, it, it kind of deters him. I obviously get the slow in the vision, so the vision's the main thing that I'm looking for, but uh, you could always play the trade-off on whether you want to put the mines in the bush or spread it out between the uh, the mud pit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the disrespect spray with the yeah. poop, too. That's amazing. Okay, uh, so you're also using on Li Ming here that Neo Steel plating, which is giving you the 25 armor for two seconds. Siege mode grants 100% more armor, so when you see those big slow orbs coming in, you're able to negate a huge amount of that. So someone like maybe Chromie would be better against Sergeant Hammer because the bolts are faster and give you less time to react? Yeah, it it definitely depends on the player. Um, I don't have the fastest reaction speed, so yeah, it, it's definitely impossible that, uh, that Chromie might catch me off guard, but generally... Um, all the mages, Chromie, Gul'dan, Li Ming, whatever it is, uh, you sh you should be able to press the armor button before it hits you. But whether that happens every time, it it, it usually doesn't. But yeah, it, if anything, a lot of the decision making is more so: do I just want to take the damage anyway? So so uh, it is a very long cooldown, 16 seconds. It used to be 12, but then um, that was kind of the nerf that removed Hammer from the meta, and now she's back a bit. So, um, yeah, you have to be careful with your E usage on that long cooldown. Sometimes you just have to decide, I can tank the orb and then um, save your E for the next big load of damage. Hammer being back in the meta, is that kind of that assassin macro thing we're seeing with, like, heavy, heavy Sylvanas pick and even Tychus with the lane clear grenade stuff? Um, she got buffed a lot, and she... There were some changes that did. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, there were some changes that I think people didn't fully test out and didn't realize how strong it was. I was one of them. I didn't think Hammer was very good after the changes. Um, I didn't try out this build until I saw other people playing it. I was a longtime Hammer fan. Uh, I played a Hammer a ton when she got reworked and uh, in HGC Open. Um, yeah, I, I really love the hero, so I, the fact that I get to play her and uh, she's on everyone's mind on whether I'm going to pick her is a lot of fun for me. But uh, we'll, I'll mention the talents that got buffed when we talk about the build and why they're so big of buffs. Awesome. Let, while we're watching uh, Chromie here, eventually, eventually, succumb mm -hmm. to the many, many dives. Uh, <laughs> You guys were putting together this draft, and early on you picked Blaze Johanna, which, you know, traditionally mm -hmm. we, we see more of that, as I mentioned, Storm League Morales kind of style for Hammer, but these big, big, meaty front lines in front of Hammer. And that certainly supplies that. Then there was a Chromie pickup. Was that basically your counter draft so that the enemy didn't have Chromie there? Uh, it was in the back of our mind, we didn't go into this draft saying we're always picking Hammer and we didn't pick Chromie for this whole purpose of picking Hammer. Okay. Um, it, it was a, it was really slight in considering whether we want Chromie or not because it, if we're picking Chromie only because we want Hammer, it, it's a really big disadvantage if uh, they pick other things that are coincidentally good to Hammer or if they recognize that what we're doing. Uh, but yeah, we... We think Chromie is strong, and we would have picked her here regardless of whether we were considering him or not. So not to give away one of your favorite heroes' counters, but what sort of things might be in that list of things that are absolute no-go for Hammer? Um, it, it's it's hard to say. Chromie's definitely pretty good into it. Uh, more so, I think late game Hammer, if you could spawn in at 20 and... Uh, you know, it, both teams are level 20. It, I, she really doesn't have that many counters at late game. Uh, more so early game, you have heroes like Genji that is pretty good with uh, Shingan and his uh, Shuriken build. You don't even need to wait for Shingan 13. He's pretty good. Uh, 
Otherwise, there's scenarios where if they can draft enough pressure or enough like 2v2s um, where they have one for two people in top, two people in bottom, those are other scenarios where Hamer really doesn't want a 2v2. Um, you can turtle and kind of defend your, your fort, but um, typically if CC starts to get overlapped or there's big burst, that's when Hammers uh, does really poorly. She wants to play into low burst or where she can mitigate the burst effectively and get the fights to really last a long time so she can just keep auto attacking. That makes sense. And here in this game, we saw you have that really, really heavy, I mean, advantage here in that bottom lane that got you guys now, that periodic catapult. Blaze was able to mm -hmm. take the lane because he's going to push up further than you with more safety. And now you're just, you're the auto attack machine. And is this, you mentioned early on that you don't necessarily want hammer in the 4v4. So is that now changed because your build has come together? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it, 13 is really the first point at which hammer can team fight. Um, once you get the CDR in your Z, um, you kind of just auto, 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 and then you can Z away or Z in. Um, the main thing is just that you're watching your Z city so that when you siege up again, you need to be able to get it within one to two seconds uh, or one to two auto attacks from when you press siege again. I believe here, I actually make a mistake where I thought I had a lower cooldown than I did, and I thought I could eke out a few extra autos. So we'll see when I actually don't follow my own advice and mess up here, but uh, I'm still getting back into the groove with Hammer. I, I think everyone else is too. It, it's somewhat new that people are looking at her. Um, so yeah, I've seen here like I okay yeah my CCD yeah yeah I, I think um, right there I I'd mentally I thought I had my Z cooldown sooner than I did but yeah generally you want to have a pretty good idea of um, you know it's five seconds in auto or if you splash onto multiple people that also it triggers for each instance of uh, hero hit so if you hit two heroes you get ten seconds wow yeah um, that was my next question wow yeah. Yeah, and then with the level one, with the bigger AOE, you're more likely to hit more people. So it's really easy to get super fast cooldown on that. But um, it can also be kind of a mind game of can you hit a hero five times within five seconds so you you Z's back up in five seconds. Uh, that's kind of a game that you play often, and sometimes you just have to wait it out and you just kind of have to be patient. So that is while in siege mode, though. So in this particular build and the strategy you're playing, and you've got yourself the hover siege, this wouldn't be like boost rainer. You're not going to hang out outside of siege mode and try to get kills in that mode. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So it, a lot of times you're just you press D, you get a few auto attacks in, and then if the fight moves, you need you need to move with Z, find where you're going to place yourself and then D and find the next auto attacks quickly. If you don't find your next auto attacks, then you kind of just have to remove yourself from the fight and find where you are safe so you can eke in the, the next few autos and then get the CDR back. Okay. Um, that, that's a lot of the playstyle in post 13. And I don't think she has too viable of a playstyle before then. Um, you can obviously use the range and stay far away. That's something that you're always doing, but um, it's really important to be mindful of that CCDR. That sounds really fun, actually. I, I, I've seen quite a few, <laughs> you know, uh, Storm League of uh, full-blown spider mine builds, particularly on, like, weird stuff like Braxis. Uh, yeah. But this build means you have so much purpose as to what you're doing, and you're fulfilling that pure damage role for the team. So in this way, like, your bruisers and chromie get to be the finishing kill, but sergeant's just there for raw, raw damage. Correct. Right. And yep. it gives you a lot of purpose then as you enter a fight, attack anything, anything, anything is okay to attack. Absolutely, you know, just get them out and then you're able to readjust zoom for a little bit. And in fact, right. zoom between lanes because you know you're going to go attack something else and get siege there. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, and there is an order to what you're attacking, but yeah, if. If you can attack something, always attack something. You're you're dealing effective damage and you're getting um, your ZCD. So that's important to always be careful of. So in that instance there, you saw the mini map. You saw that I believe it was uh, Johanna was giving you some sight on the rotate. So you kind of sat in the middle of the lane. 
took some tiny damage from the minions, but got that pressure onto the keep. Yeah, um, our goal right here, we're just trying to cat and mouse them. Okay. Um, the objective is bottom side. Uh, we want 20. We we love 20 if we're picking hammer. Like I was saying before, if we could spawn in at 20 v 20, um, we'd probably pick hammer most games. I don't think she has many counters after that. Uh, the the buffs that they did to the 20 talents just are nuts, and she's an absolute monster late game. Interesting. Okay, so well, we we didn't talk about level four here. The regenerative bio steel. You mentioned it early on in your duel against Li Ming. The basic tax ball in siege mode again. So this is all siege mode all the time. 10% of the damage dealt goes to life. Correct, yep. And that accounts for your splash damage as well. So, uh, yeah, I guess if you want to just go through the build right now, we're almost 20, it might be a good time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, level one, you get the increased AOE on your trait. Uh, that increases the splash damage and then your radius goes from two to 2.5. Uh, it's pretty meaningful on uh, being able to hit more minions so you life steal faster, hitting more heroes for uh, your level 13 and 20 procs, and uh, increasing your, your bonus splash damage just for better wave clear. Sure. Hammer becomes the wave clear hero. Uh, that's pretty unique where you get an auto attacker that has one of the best wave clears in the game and is able to turtle. Um, one role that's commonly given in competitive games is a goalie. A goalie is someone who just sits under your gate or your wall early game and just defends the wall against pushes. So they're good oh, okay. in 1v4s, 2v4s, that kind of thing. Um, Hammer is pretty good at being a goalie where you get the increased AOE damage, your life stealing. Um, she, has, she has a lot of things going for her there. So in this early game here, <clears throat> If you ended up in that extreme CC situation, granted, the only thing left on the enemy side that they could pick was their final pick, and they went with Lee Ming, so they did not have any range pressure on Hammer in the first place. Kind of drafted them into that corner. But if you were, let's say, Storm Link one-tricking, you early pick Hammer, is that where you kind of end up in this, like, siege tactics, unstoppable uh, 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 ambush kind of play? Um... I would recommend not picking Hammer in that scenario. Okay, okay. Uh, I I tried that a bit when Hammer first got reworked. I'm not a fan of Ambush in the old build, Ambush Unstoppable. Uh, there's definitely games where it's good, but I'd be hard-pressed to even see one of those games where it's good, but this build isn't better. So um, this build might just be overtuned in comparison. I. I personally don't see any reason to ever take the Ambush Unstoppable build. Uh, the only real benefit is that it allows you to go Giant Killer. Uh, you really don't have an option to go Giant Killer on 16 on this uh, build because you need the bonus damage for increased lifesteal. Um, Executioner is viable, but uh, Mechanical know-how is very strong after they buffed it. Uh, the 20% extra uh, health that you get you also get the 50% shield, so or uh, the 50 armor, I mean. So with the 50% damage reduction, it's kind of closer to um, a 40% max health shield. It's really hard for them to get through that. Interesting. So, so you've gotten yourself. So you get the armor. You're always in siege. You gain increased basic attack damage for 30% for five seconds. So this is all about just this late game survivability and because you're in siege so much, you want this talent over the auto attack. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Giant Killer also, it doesn't um, increase your life steal. Oh, so there's a oh, small yeah. benefit of that as well. So you're getting the um, the life steal off of the, uh, the bonus 30%. And with it being on demand, it does help if you're clearing a boss, if you're doing a boss, whatever, or if you're clearing a camp. Um, whereas Executioner will never proc in that scenario unless yeah. there's enemy heroes nearby. So that's kind of nice, but um, it, you can take Executioner no problem, and it's completely fine. I think if um, if the defensive portion of mechanical know-how wasn't as good, I'd be taking Executioner more often, but... Um, with it being dual purpose on mechanical know-how, it 
I'm taking that talent most of the time, even with the long cooldown. Right, and then, and then the lane clear part, as you mentioned, the boss part, like this is on demand and all targets. So you're not reliant right. on having that heavy CC team. A buff for Arthas perhaps would allow, <laughs> would allow this <laughs> to be the number one pick, uh, but I totally get, okay, yeah. And then giant killer doesn't work back into your build with the healing because Let's it's percent it. yep. based. Yeah, because it says, ah, okay, okay. Exactly. That, that's a cool thought. So always, hanging out in the siege mode, finding your new position, but not over-reliant on it because of the hover siege and the auto attacks that are reducing the cooldown. So you have a lot of leniency in where you right. get to siege up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. All right, so what's this level 20? Ultra capacitors. Man, is that talent good now? Um, so before, I think it might have been 40 or 50%, but it's stacked at 5%. Um, an auto attack i think it was 40 percent so the fact that it stacks so quickly now you take the bigger aoe with this build and you're getting to max attack speed within a few autos usually within four autos you can usually find two man hits but even if you don't um you know it it's a stacking attack speed so it ramps up on how fast you're um stacking it up as well uh your damage throughput is just higher than most of the other heroes in the game you have the benefit of being Sergeant Hammer and you outrange everyone. It it becomes a real problem for them because it, their tanks need to kind of posture up and look for some type of engage. Your auto attack range is the same engage range as where they want to go from. So Muradin right there, he's jumped 16. He's not even jumping at me anymore uh, because I have my Z up all the time. I'm getting it so much quicker with the increased attack speed, but... Uh, as soon as he even tries to posture for that, I'm already hitting him. I'm ramping up the attack speed. I'm, I'm poking him down. It becomes a real problem for him because there's so many defensive tools that I have that, uh, and I'm kind of just putting a, a question on. Can you answer me with all this attack speed here? I, I'm just gonna out damage everyone. So you're, you're on a time limit and you have to go. And because you have the increased armor because you're in siege mode, which is also giving a max health shield, which means it has overall more effectiveness. You right. have the survivability if they go in, plus the dash, plus the pushback, plus the mines. Yep. And that splash, as you mentioned, is now healing you more, and the splash is what's camping up your auto attack speed faster, because each hero hit gives you 10%. Right, exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of tools going on here. Um, a lot of them work with each other. You have... Um a lot of defensive tools and offensive tools that kind of stack on top of each other so there becomes a lot of problems for the enemy team and hammers always kind of had the play style of are you going to answer me and that's why she's commonly the last pick you know uh gotcha <laughs> but um yeah especially in this iteration where the level 20 is just so nuts with the attack speed and the lifesteal it you do a lot of damage in your life stealing a lot. So you, the other team definitely needs some strong answers to be able to to respond to it. And because you're hovering and zooming around so much, this isn't like our Infernal Shrines hammer Deckard combo where you've got a whole bunch of potions stacked under you. Like he's, Correct. he's busy with other people for a good chunk of this. Yeah, so that's one thing, um, you know, I think Happy still isn't fully used to it, but I'm like, yeah, just leave me alone. Go do other things in the laning phase, because... <laughs> That's so I, empowering. The, That's great. Yeah, yeah. with the lifesteal, it's just, you know, I, I don't need a healer unless I'm fully poked out, in which case either someone needs to cover me, but yeah, it, it's pretty strong with that lifesteal and the AoE damage. Um, you're just always full health pretty quick, so... And I've been that Deckard before in that situation where, oh, it's so easy, just put potions under the hammer, but everyone's diving the hammer, which means they're diving you, so you're running away as Deckard, and it's, it's quite miserable, actually. So this yeah. makes a lot, a lot of sense. So we kind of skipped over your level 10. Is that because uh, Napalm Strike is just the go-to and Blunt Force Gun just doesn't have a place? No, BFG has a place. Okay. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, BFG scales at 3% per level and it's on a really uh long cooldown so um between those two factors i 
pretty much will try to always take napalm unless I absolutely have to take BFG. The only time where I would take BFG is if we have a full dive comp and we are looking for some contribution from me that I'm not going to be able to auto attack them. So yeah, they're going to be so that, far past you. You just want to help out that Zera tool somewhere back there. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's a pretty rare scenario. Um, either you have to screw up in the draft somewhere since you're usually last picking hammer or you're intentionally saying, yeah, we only need 500 damage or however much from BFG. And that's, that's all she's going to contribute. Um, and she does all the other hammer things at the same time. I'm a big fan of Napalm. It does a lot of damage. Um, kind of fits into what you're trying to do. Uh, you know, just I'm going to hit your buildings. You got to answer me. Or I'm going to hit your front line. Try to answer me. Uh, it definitely aligns with that play style. But yeah, it it depends on what you're trying to do. But yeah, it, the other thing is that um, Napalm also lets you wave clear when they're pushing in so as much as you can defuse the game and get to 20 that's that's a big part of it way more defensive in that way is there is there ever any like awareness to having slows under your napalm or do you just not care about that level of optimization for napalm it's just another damage source yeah it i don't think it matters I, you don't need to min max the dot on it if you cast napalm and you get one or two ticks on the um the damage per set or on uh, the aoe damage that's fine With but a six second you're cool not down. yeah not not concerned terribly about its optimization right yeah you're not winning a game off of making them stand in napalm for a few other seconds you should just pick the other heroes that are good at what you're trying to do is there ever anything else other than ultra capacitor or is, or is that just too good not for me no, all right i'm only going ultra <laughs> capacitors if other people want to take the other talents please do <laughs> I think I think this was a great sell. I love this rundown. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you for the the big hammer uh, mm -hmm. pitch here. I think yeah, no this problem. is a fabulous build. I think this has a lot of wiggle room in those storm league scenarios we find ourselves in. Everyone here watching, be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell here at Heroes Hearth for more learn to play action, and of course, that ongoing CCL season.